London, 2237. They always said the sun had never set on the Empire. But now, most of old Blighty is a shell of his former self. We just got a big update to Fallout London. This being one of the ambitious new game DLC sized mods on their way to Fallout 4. They just released a new trailer as well as shared some images and details with me. And I gotta say, this is probably one of the best made fan trailers we've seen for a Fallout 4 mod thus far, easily in the top tier of content created. So in this video, I'm gonna basically give you the rundown on this hugely ambitious Fallout project and a lot of the things they've done already and even a lot of the things they're doing differently there's quite a few reasons to get particularly excited for this one, but before that, I want to talk about today's video sponsor, Frag Pro Shooter. Frag Pro Shooter is one of the best mobile shooter games available right now because it was designed specifically with mobile devices in mind. And it's extremely active, having over 70 million players and more than 1 million active players every single day. The game is completely free to play based on your own skill, and by paying attention to this video and clicking on that link in the description, you can get some exclusive rewards for yourself. The rules of the game are simple. Your goal is to destroy the enemy's bunkers and towers as quickly as possible as they try and do the exact same thing to you. But with over 90 characters to choose from, each of them featuring their own abilities and specific gameplay style, each match will feel completely different and unique and you'll always be upgrading and customizing your deck. And they are consistently adding new content. The latest release was Lily, who can gather dark energy to boost your own HP as well as release it in a giant powerful explosion of flames. Bright Pro Shooter has new numerous game modes to pick from, but my personal favorite is definitely the 2v2s. You build a team with a randomly matched partner or one of your friends, each of you bringing three characters to the battle, then you go up against two other players for a pretty intense fight. And right now, I have free rewards for you, only thanks to that link in the description, and even for those of you who are already playing Frag. Looking back over at Fallout London, again, if you haven't checked out this trailer, it is simply amazing. Between the commentary, visual panning shots, and even music in the background, it comes together to be be something pretty special. It starts off with that familiar backwards panning shot, we've seen this in a ton of fan made and official trailers around the Fallout franchise, but then from there it quickly becomes its own. You see a completely distinctive landscape and even references to the UK and London specifically all throughout. You see Tesco, you can see a panning shot from that iconic double decker bus. So Fallout London in a nutshell is an expansive DLC sized mod for Fallout 4, taking you of course to a totally new and unique location post apocalyptic London. It's pretty unique compared to the more modern Fallout games in that it's taking place during the year 2237. So for context, this is going to be 50 years before the events of Fallout 4 and specifically in between the events of Fallout 1 and 2. And of course, as a result of this, you are not the sole survivor. You're going to be a new adventurer known as the Wayfarer. And since we're crossing the Atlantic, the first UK-based Fallout game or really non-US based Fallout game, there's going to be a ton of new stuff, new creatures, weapons, and of course, you unique factions to make up this world. Looking at the trailer, one of the most striking parts right off the bat is of course the world space and map itself. It's described how the world will actually be a similar size to Fallout 4's Commonwealth, and in fact taking you from Westminster to the outskirts of Bromley. So definitely giving you a good cross section of London and the surrounding area overall. To me, one of the coolest parts of seeing this landscape is just how much effort they've actually put in into making it look distinct from the rest of the Fallouts and even just Fallout 4's landscape. The vehicles look different, the people are dressing differently, and of course, the architecture is completely distinct, creating a quite compelling place that really makes you want to explore. It feels like something fresh and new. And of course, during this, you're going to see quite a few iconic locations, ranging from Parliament to the Tube. And although all of that is particularly exciting, the buildings looking different, to me, what is actually one of the really interesting parts of this is, of course, since it is taking place in London, from a story perspective, you are kind of operating on a blank slate, but also with several givens. So some of the staples of the American-based fallouts won't be here because it is a totally different location. For example, the FEV virus will not be present here. The FEV virus was created in the US, so it doesn't necessarily make sense from a lore perspective for it to cross the pond. Since the FEV isn't here, things like super mutants, death claws, and even centaurs aren't going to be a thing in Fallout London. And of course, instead, they're going to have their own unique forms of creatures and even mutations or diseases, but we'll talk more about that in a moment. 
Vault Tech is a cornerstone of the Fallout franchise, but Vault Tech is a purely American company, so they're not in Fallout London either. The team does describe having their own take on vaults, and there will be underground bunkers, because naturally, people building vaults before a potential war or nuclear event is pretty normal, makes sense, but these vaults will be different because they're not ran by Vault Tech. We won't necessarily have all of those messed up experiments. They haven't shared too many details on how exactly they'll be different from a lore or story perspective, but that gets me pretty excited. I'm curious to see how they're going to mix things up here. And even when it comes to the weapons, they don't have plans to reuse any of the weapons from Fallout 4. So you should hopefully have a completely unique slate of items available to you when you play this mod. But of course, also there's going to be completely new and unique factions to make up Fallout London's world space. We see several of the factions in the trailer doing various things. Another website, they've given a nice rundown on what is going on with many of these factions. Those armored up dudes you see in the trailer are the Tommies. These guys are functionally the defenders of London and act as the main defense force around some of the various locations you'll find. They're actually wearing a pretty awesome futurized Great War look, so that Great War armor from World War One, but in a more Fallout theme. At the time of the game, the Tommies are largely at the hands of the Gentry. These guys are basically the present rulers of London and are made up from the descendants of what previously was government officials or aristocrats. The Gentry are described as having a pretty strict role and will actually ask people for tribute in exchange for defense or aid, almost like a feudal system. The Vagabounds are effectively British gangsters. These guys specifically fueled by revenge and led by a man named Sebastian Gaunt. The Vagabonds are directly opposed to the Isle of Dog Syndicate, which is another more established gangster group in the area. The Isle of Dog Syndicate are mainly made up of merchants and scavengers who are significantly more established and wealthy criminals. But they did kill the previous leader of the Vagabounds, putting the two at odds seemingly permanently. We get a brief glimpse at the fifth column. This is a faction led by a person named Eve Varney. And more or less, what these guys want to do is tear down the establishment of London and rebuild a new empire. And this goal is becoming increasingly popular among the lower orders of London, as people want to replace that establishment. Finally, we get Camelot, which I have a feeling is going to end up being a fan favorite, almost similar to the Brotherhood of Steel. Camelot is fighting to free post-apocalyptic London from gentry rule and implement a new representative republic. They largely find themselves in hiding, but continue to work towards a revolution and kind of occupy a cross between World War II commandos and King Arthur's knights. And they too are actually representing some pretty awesome armor in the trailer. One final faction detailed is deliberately not too well known, and that is Angel. It's an elusive group rumored to be descendants of the Deep Science Ministry. And apparently, these are the ones secretly running London, reportedly having eyes everywhere, but little is known about them. So you can see from this how they have slowly crafted this world space into something unique in more ways than one. Not only are the structures and location, but also the people that are making this up will tell you unique stories and introduce you to totally new factions with different ideals. But of course, for a good Fallout world, you need some crazy and terrifying creatures. One of the unique enemies that we could see in the trailer are the Thames folk. Basically, these are regular people trying to survive, but unfortunately, they were a little bit too close to the now polluted Thames River. The pollution here will alter their DNA to create an almost reptilian look that you could see in the trailer, and as you can imagine, these are not the most friendly of NPCs. You could see Camelot fighting another new creature with the Gehenna. These guys appear in the fracking district and will basically be made of black tar and shiny oil. And there are other new features like new and additional weathers. Throughout the trailer, you could actually see a couple of the new weathers, and they even have plans to add in a pretty notable acid rain. It's described as something that will actually have a bit of an impact and you definitely don't want to get caught out in. So taking that all together, Fallout London is quickly becoming something pretty special. They've shared a ton of screenshots over the past couple of months, and even more importantly, something they've been doing is releasing a ton of mods. So even though in this one we are largely looking at future content, there's a ton of stuff you could download for this one already. The Bren Gun is one of the best weapons they've released thus far. This of course being that iconic machine gun you've probably seen in other movies or media, and it's super satisfying to use with Fallout 4's weapon system. But even some smaller stuff like a Luger, another one you have probably seen before, getting that fully functional in Fallout 4 with quite a bit in the way of customization options. One of my favorite armors for them to release is the Junky Knight armor. I love the design of this one. It's clearly inspired by those 12th century knight armors, but also it's kind of rusted and pieced together because it's now just being used hundreds of years later. And it does occupy a pretty relevant niche overall. And then last but not least, one of the most iconic ones, we do have the Fallout London Royal Guard uniform. 
platform. We actually get a shot of this during the trailer, and it is in fact a mod you could download right now for a very unique look in Fallout 4. And that's not even everything. Those are some of my favorite mods they've released, but they got a few more other weapons and armors out there right now. Fallout London over the past year or so has really upgraded to another level. Between this trailer and several of their standalone mod releases, they are just creating a ton of great content for us to explore and experience. Things are looking great thus far, and I'm very excited to see where they go next or what they release next. And if you want to keep up to date with the mod or anything else I talked about in this video, I will have links to all of their social media down below. With that said, hopefully you guys found this one informative. I thank you as always again for watching, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.